these are books that most people who read them love. And I'm just out here going, not for me. It's not for me, Mark. I'm, I feel terribly ill all of a sudden. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're well. My name is Megan if you're new here and today I thought it'd be fun to chat about my second <laughs> my second chance authors. So these are authors I have read before or maybe a few times in one case and I haven't really liked their books. <laughs> <laughs> This is not for me. No. But I think I could. So I want to give them one more shot. Only get one shot. So make it. What is that from? Is that JLS? Only get one shot, so make it I don't know. I want to give them one more go, their books one more go before I just decide that they are an author that obviously isn't for me personally. Don't get offended if your favourite author is on this list. I'm sorry, you probably hate some of my favourite authors. We can just all coexist. Now, I'm about to make some people mad. I'm about to make some people mad. The first author is Casey McQuiston. I hated Red, White and Royal Blue. I hated Red, White and Royal Blue. I hated Red, White and Royal Blue. I can admit that. Wasn't for me. Was not for me. I didn't like it. Should I just say I hate it again? <laughs> I just didn't like much about the romance. I thought the plot was strange. I thought the pacing was really weird at the end. Like we had like five end scenes. Like five scenes that could have just been the end of the book were done. But it just kept going on. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Is it Henry who's the Prince of England? Yeah, he... Is that even a person? Is that even a person? Or is that a caricature? I'm not even talking as a British person, like, oh my god, that's not how British people act. Because that probably is how some rich people act. However, I just don't think he had any nuance to him. But I feel like I could like Casey McQuiston's writing, because everyone else seems to like it. And I'm just sitting here, like, I'm being left out. I want to join in. I'm going to give their books one more chance with One Last Stop, which comes out June 1st next year. I love part of my reason for this. And the, the reason why Katie McQuiston was the first author to come to my head was that I love the cover. I love the cover. <laughs> You're that bitch. You're going to do amazing today. You're fucking beautiful. Is a lot of my reasoning for this based off of the fact that I love the cover? Yes, but... I didn't really like the red, white, and royal blue cover. So, this bodes well. <laughs> they described it as being about two girls falling in love on a train with a time travel -y twist. I love time travel. Don't read about it enough. I like that it's two girls this time. I feel like maybe I'll enjoy that more. If I don't like One Last Stop, their writing just obviously isn't for me and I've just got to like bow out gracefully and accept that because their writing is for a lot of other people, just not for me. And I would just have to like swallow my fear of missing out and just live with it. Now an author, I didn't like hate this book, right? But the next author is Rin Chapeco. I read The Never Tilting World. I gave it three stars, maybe even, did I give it a 3.5 at the time? But on reflection, it's like a 2.75, 2.5. I dislike it more as time goes on, I'm sorry. <laughs> Again, this is a book that everyone seems to love. Like a lot of, I feel like, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like a lot of these books aren't like mixed opinion books. These are books that most people who read them love. And I'm just out here going, not for me. It's not for me, Mark. I'm, I feel terribly ill all of a sudden. I can't see, I've gone shaky. The second one, to, is it like the Ever Cruel Kingdom? Is that right? I'll put a picture here. It has just come out. I think today when I'm filming this, it's come out. But I may try one of their other books. I may try one of Rinch Pecco's other books instead of that because maybe it's just the series that isn't for me it has a lot of split povs that i kind of like split the story in two so you're following two different stories that may be different in the second book i don't mind having lots of different stories i think i would like it better if each of those four povs were following completely different stories they all had their personal journey but the fact that you have two povs in each story i don't get attached enough to the characters to care Whereas, am I doing an okay job of explaining this? If it's the four POVs, each with a different storyline, I don't expect to feel super attached to them. But if we've only got two storylines, I want to be attached. I want to care about these storylines, but I don't. Now that's bullying. Did you see that? 
it ended up feeling like both were underdeveloped, if that makes sense. So I may try out a different one of their series. I know there's The Bone Witch and Wicked As You Wish. So I may try one of those out instead. Let me know if you've read a lot from Rinchipeko where you think I would like. <laughs> But I definitely want to give their writing another go. And although part of me is in my head like, why would you start a different one of their series when you could just finish the one that you have started? And if you don't like that, then you know their writing's not for you. But in my head, I'm like, well, the problem could be with just the series, not their writing. So I don't want to write them off. I don't want to like <laughs> say I'm never going to read them again if I haven't tried a different series. The next author who I'm going to give a second chance is Bethany C. Morrow. So Bethany C. Morrow wrote A Song Below Water. I'll put the cover here. You probably... Okay. I didn't like it. I think I gave it three stars again. No, I think I gave it 2.75 at the time and rounded it up because I was feeling kind. Basically in the world of A Song Below Water, there are creatures like mermaids, or no sirens and there's other kind of like creatures or no but there's they're people like people with different abilities right and that's accepted but not everyone has that it's kind of a unique thing but there was obviously loads of different types of these and we never really learned about them we never really learned about how they interacted with society the book was definitely meant to represent the silencing of black women and I, I liked the kind of idea of it I just didn't feel like the execution of it was done particularly well however I think I'm trying to make myself aware that the majority of books I consume and that like we on booktube consume are written in a very western style that's the style that's been normalized for like almost everyone even when we read from POC authors it is majority of the time still following a, the traditional book format which is a western book format because like colonialism and like racism etc we are used to how that wet european style western style or predominant style of a story is structured the information we expect to receive we shouldn't critique books that don't fit into that style of storytelling for not doing what it never set out to do and so i definitely want to read more from bethany c morrow because maybe i will become more used to the style in which a story is told i think it's definitely something i want to read physically next time i listen to the audiobook and i just think maybe that's not the best way for me to consume her work but yeah, I'm trying to make myself aware of when authors who never set out to do the traditional style of book, not to then critique them for not having a clear plot or having clear world building. You know what I mean? Her next book is in the same series, so hopefully I'll get more used to the world and the setting, but I think it's following different characters. Next, next is one that I need to like hold my hands up and say, I may not have disliked this book, because of the book. It was a mistake. Next is Cat Cho, who I love. I love Cat Cho. <laughs> so I didn't like Wicked Fox. I gave it two stars. I remember reading it and being like, what is this? But since then, I have become obsessed with her YouTube channel. I love her YouTube channel. Like I watch Kat Cho all the time. I love her as a person. And so I just want to love her books so bad. We need this. This is essential. This is a crisis. And the thing is, right? I made a discovery. I listened to the audiobook of Wicked Fox and I was like, this ain't it. This ain't it. Then when I was reading The Poppy War by R.F. Quan, I tried out the audiobook very briefly and I was like oh no 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 and I like for a moment I hated the poppy war like for a moment I was like oh my god I hate it I hate the poppy war this is awful when I had been loving it the rest of the time and I loved it when I finished it the poppy war is a five star but when I was listening to the audiobook I was like I ain't vibing with this I ain't vibing with this and I found out they have the same audiobook narrator. And this audiobook narrator is, again, <laughs> an audiobook narrator a lot of people love. Their name is one I see come up on Twitter as an audiobook narrator people love, which never happens. Like, people never just discuss their favourite audiobook narrators, but people discuss this one. And I cannot tell you, I've, like, listened back to these audiobooks, and I can't tell you why I don't like them. I can't be like, oh, I don't like the way they talk like this. I can't tell you why I don't like it, but I don't like it. <laughs> It's the truth. So I think maybe this audiobook narrator is not for me. And maybe I've been mean to Wicked Fox and I would have liked it if I'd read it physically. So maybe that's the problem. However, I don't think because I'm just not invested, I don't think I'm going to read the second in the Wicked Fox series. However, in 2022, which is ages away, but I'm very excited about it because I watch her vlogs and I watch her speak about this. Catcho is coming out with a kind of like K-drama romance for YA. It's called Once Upon a K-Prom. Come on now. She's an icon. 
She's a legend and she is the moment. Yeah. Now, come on now. And it's about childhood best friends being reunited for prom where one of them became like, a, he had become like a K-pop superstar, like one of the most famous K-pop artists in the world. And he came back to ask out his childhood friend for prom. And it just sounds so cute. And I really love it. And I really love hearing her speak about it, like in her vlogs. And I just love her. So I'm hoping I will love this. And I'm definitely not gonna listen to the audiobook if it has the same narrator. Audiobooks are difficult, right? Because like they can make or break a book. I think for example, The Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter, which is a five star series for me, Part of why I love that so much is the audiobook. It brings the book alive in a completely different way. With an audiobook, I feel like it'll either make you love the book more or make you feel more like meh or not like the book more. Like I feel like it takes you further in either direction. Okay, and then the last author is a bit of a different one because I've actually read from this author three times. I gave one of their books five stars. I gave the others three and 2.5 respectively. <laughs> and this is Neil Schusterman. So when I read Scythe, the first book in the Scythe series, I gave it three stars. I was like, this is fine. It's a bit of an average YA. Not really feeling it, but I'll read on. I read Thunderhead. I gave it five stars. I loved it. I At one point, Thunderhead was in my, my, my top 10 books of last year. Then I read The Toll and I gave that 2.5 stars. It was such a disappointment. That story went on one of the weirdest like it was, the plot was steady from Scythe and Thunderhead. We were on a great path. And then suddenly Neil Schusterman went, ah! <laughs> it went in like one of the weirdest directions a book series has ever gone. It still makes me sad. I can't even look at the wall without thinking sad things. And I think that's kind of like a popular opinion. Like a lot of people didn't like the toll. I feel like I need to give Neil Schusterman one more go because he has some gems, obviously. So I know that he has Dry Out. I believe that's with his brother, isn't it? I think I want to read that. I think I want to give that a go. And then from that, I may make a decision on what I think of him or maybe whenever he comes out with a next book. It's very unusual for me to have an author that I feel very differently about a lot of their books and kind of all mixed up chronologically. Like for example, Lee Bardugo, I don't love the Shadow and Bone trilogy. Like, I really don't think that's good, but that's also the first thing she wrote. And then I love Ninth House. And it makes sense that like an author would improve how much I like them over time, right? But for it to be all over the place, for it to be three, five, 2.5, is just weird. And it's not like they're his debut books either. So that is all of my second chance authors. Let me know down below if there's any of them you think that I definitely will like the next book that I read from them. A lot of them are debut authors who have got new books coming out next year. Let me know which of them you think I should definitely give another chance and hopefully I will like them more this time. And I will see you very soon in another video. Bye.